What is up you guys? My name is Aubrey and this is my channel and today we're going to be talking about credit scores and how you can go about improving your credit score. Because with the idle applications and the idle grants and a lot of people getting denied on the basis of credit, I've been getting more and more questions from my viewers on how people can go about easily and realistically raising their credit scores in a relatively short period of time. So in this video, we'll be going over a few of the things that you can start doing today that will have a huge impact on your credit score going forward. So let's get started. Now this video topic is pretty timely because I made a credit score video a few months ago and in that video I talked about how a secured credit card allowed me and helped me to raise my credit score by about 60 points in just under 30 days. In that video I outlined kind of why my credit score has been historically bad, what happened to cause my credit score to drastically decrease, and how the secured credit card impacted my credit score in a positive way. If you guys are interested in checking out that video and learning the backstory on why my credit is poor, I will include a link to that in the description below. Within the last couple of weeks, my credit score was officially promoted from poor to average, which was actually a pretty big feat for me because it had been in the poor range for an extremely long time, and to see that it was officially an average was a big personal milestone for me, especially because one of my goals for 2020 was to increase my credit score to a 630, and with this new average ranking, I have now surpassed that. So with that, there has been a few key things that I've done over the last few months to increase my credit score. In fact, this time last year, my score was about 480, and now as I'm recording this video, it is about 640. So the things that I've done over the last six months to a year have had a pretty drastic impact on my credit score as a whole. So let's go over some of the key points and the key things that I did to increase my credit score and some of the things that you can do to increase yours. One of the biggest pieces of information and one of the most important things that you need to remember with building your credit is that simply avoiding credit will not improve your credit score. For a long time, I thought that if I simply avoided credit, eventually the bad credit files will fall off and then as a result, my credit would improve. And it was simply just a waiting game at that point. But that assumption is incorrect and that is kind of a surefire way for you to always have poor credit. And the only way you can really start to improve your credit is to start accumulating good credit. And the way that you do that is by using credit cards, by taking out an auto loan, by taking out a personal loan, and by showing that you can borrow money and pay that money back responsibly. Now, this concept as a whole is kind of a catch-22 because to say just accumulate good credit is something that sounds relatively easy. But for somebody who has bad credit, that is something that is way easier said than done. Because if you're somebody that has poor credit, then you definitely understand that it's easier said than done to be approved for credit. And more often than not, you're going to be denied, which is kind of going to send you in this endless revolving door of having poor credit but never being able to improve it because you can never get approved for a credit line. Now the way that I got out of this revolving door is through a secured credit card. Now for those of you who don't know, a secured credit card is basically a credit card that you have to pay a deposit for. So how it worked for me was I ended up going the Capital One route and I ended up applying for and getting approved for a Capital One secured credit card. And through that, I was able to send in a $200 deposit and in return Capital One gave me a $200 credit line. How the secured process works is it's essentially saying that if you never pay back that credit card then Capital One gets to keep your money and they're going to use that deposit as a way to pay off your credit line. And the credit limit is $200 meaning that you only get to spend whatever the amount of deposit you put down. This is a way for you to prove that you are a responsible borrower but it is also a way for the lender to ensure that they will not end up losing money in the deal. Now the reason why I chose Capital One specifically was because they had a program in their agreement that said that if you paid off your credit card on time and never missed a payment for three months, then they would take you off of the secured credit card and instead give you a larger, more legit credit account through their system. And that's exactly what ended up happening with me. About three to four months after I was approved for the initial credit card, I was then allowed to expand my credit limit to $500. I was taken off the secured credit card and I was given a legit credit card instead. This move alone increased my score by about 25 points. The process of applying and getting approved for a secured credit card initially back at the beginning of this year ended up increasing my credit score by about 60 points. And then once I was bumped up to a legitimate credit card through Capital One, that increased my score to about another 25 to 30 points. Now applying for and getting approved for a credit card was an absolute game changer in improving my credit because it was a really great way for me to put on good credit onto my credit history. So to this day, I use that credit card really frequently to buy groceries, to buy things for my house, to fill up my cars with gas 
gas. And I make sure to just set that credit card to auto pay. That way it never holds a balance. It always gets paid off. And then eventually I will be able to build up my credit enough and to show that I am a responsible borrower enough to go and venture out into other credit card companies with some better benefits. Now, my next tip is something that may not be accessible to everybody, but if you have a loved one or a significant other or a sibling who you trust and who trusts you, and this person has a good credit score, if they have a perfect payment history and a perfect on-time payment history as well, you could ask them to add you as an authorized user on their credit account. And by doing that, you will absorb a lot of the benefits that come with being associated with them. So as a result, your credit age will increase, your credit on-time payments will increase, and your payment history will increase as well. This all happens by being added as an authorized user to an existing credit line account. And this can increase your score in the process. I do know that this is something that is not accessible to everybody because not everybody knows people with perfect credit scores or really good credit scores. And even if you do, you would have to feel confident enough to ask them to add you as an authorized user but if you have somebody like that in your life, it is certainly worth a shot to ask because it will significantly increase your score and it will do it virtually overnight. My third tip is kind of a no brainer one and that is to stop using credit irresponsibly and to stop using credit as a way to afford things that you wouldn't have been able to afford otherwise. Now this sounds like a piece of no brainer advice, but in my personal life and just in general, I see a lot of people who use credit as a way to afford things that they wouldn't have been able to afford otherwise. And that is simply a way to set yourself up for ultimate failure in the long run. Credit cards and the ability to finance is a great way to optimize your money. I think it's important to have credit cards, one, because you can get some really great benefits from it, but it's also a great way to build up your borrowing history so that later on down the road, you can use that to your advantage when buying things like businesses, like rental properties, a home for yourself, and so many other large purchases that can really only be made if you have a good credit score. That is where credit and credit cards and financing can really come into play. But so often I see people finance and put things on credit cards that simply don't need to be financed. For example, I know somebody personally who recently financed a washer and dryer. And in my opinion, I think that that is just an inexcusable way to use credit because there is no reason to finance an expensive high-end washer and dryer when you could buy one for a couple of hundred dollars on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. There is always an alternative to go down other than the credit card route. And I believe that if you are using credit and if you're using a credit card to make purchases that you may otherwise not have been able to make or not have been able to justify or not have been able to afford, that type of behavior is ultimately going to catch up with you and you're eventually gonna fall behind on the payments and you are eventually going to have your credit score suffer. So the best way to improve your credit score is to get out of that mindset. For me, I spent over a year only using my debit card. Once my credit score started to get negatively affected, I cut up all my credit cards and I started only using debit cards. I didn't touch a credit card for an entire year. And then once I decided that I was ready to start building back up my credit, I ended up getting the secured credit card and now I only use it on purchases that I know I can afford. I use it on daily expenses, I use it on running errands, I use it on some business expenses when I need to, and then I make sure to pay it off right away. The moment you start using credit as an extension of your finances is the moment that you start digging yourself in a hole that you will eventually be unable to get out of. And my final tip for you guys is to start early. Now I know that for some of you guys that might be too late because if you're anything like me, then you're already in your mid 20s or early 30s or in your 40s or 50s, and it may be too late to start early for you. But if you're somebody who is younger or if you're somebody that has younger siblings or you have a younger child, I would highly encourage you to have the discussion with credit as early as possible. I know quite a few adults who are in their mid to late 20s who did not get their first credit card until they were about 24, 25 years old. And that can cause a lot of issues later on down the road, especially for somebody who's wanting to eventually make purchases like buying a car or buying a house. For me, I feel extremely fortunate because I got my first credit card at 16 years old. It was associated with my own checking account that I had from my part-time job. And as a result, I was able to start building credit incredibly early. And that is why I was able to eventually secure a six-figure loan with the SBA at the age of 21. 
But the reason why I was able to secure a loan so quickly and at such an early age is because of the fact that at the age of 21, I had a 780 credit score. And so if you're somebody who's either younger or you maybe have a younger sibling or younger relative, I would highly encourage you to have the conversation on credit and to potentially look into opening a credit line or adding them as an authorized user on your credit account as early as possible. Because credit is so incredibly important and a lot of doors can open up if you have a high credit score. I'm somebody who has had an extremely high credit score at a young age, but I've also had an incredibly low credit score as well. And I personally know and I understand the hardships that come with having a poor credit score and the effects that can come along with that. For example, a couple of months ago, I switched to internet providers and I was not able to be approved for an internet router because of the fact that I had poor credit. It's things as simple as that, as getting an internet provider, as finding a place to live, as buying a car at an affordable price. All of these things can be incredibly negatively affected if you're somebody that has poor credit. And because of that, it's important to understand that though credit, when it's abused, can be incredibly harmful and incredibly toxic, credit used properly is an incredibly beneficial tool that virtually every single adult needs and can use in their life. And it's important to fully grasp on what credit score means, what type of impact it has in your life, and how you can start building that as early as possible. But with that being said, you guys, I would love to hear what y'all's thoughts are on these tips. I know that there probably are some tips that I've missed in this video, but these are the things that I personally did and I personally explored as a way to raise my own credit score. So I do know that these methods work as they worked really, really well for me. But I would love to hear your thoughts. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you guys in the next video.